In this video, we are going to perform this animation. That is, the calculation of pi using a Monte Carlo method. We will start by defining the following parameters. I will leave the figures in the center of the screen to avoid having to transform coordinates. Once this is done, we can start building the code. I will define a counter, which will increment when a point is positioned inside the circumference. I will also define the duration of the animation and the number of points. The rest is easy to understand. Let's define the points inside the square. We can use the uniform function from the random package. I will define a parameter called inCircle that we will modify in the following function. We will calculate the distance from the point to the center, and if it is less than or equal to the radius of the circle, then the point is inside the circle. We will change the state in circle and increment the counter. To simplify the code, I will use the filter function. This code will show you the following. Now we will proceed to make the animation. We are going to use this function that I also used in my intermediate Manum course when we learned how to process audio. This function basically packs a set of data given a range. In this case, we are going to ignore the excess values using the ignore argument. The logic of the animation is as follows. First, we need the FPS of the animation. We are going to render this animation with OpenGL, since it is a very simple animation and unfortunately we can't get the FPS from the config, unlike the Cairo version, that's why we must define the FPS ourselves. We calculate the amount of frames that the animation will have this way. We define a new counter and two value trackers that I will explain later. We are going to make the points transparent, and as the animation passes we are going to remove the transparency. In the case of OpenGL, we cannot add empty objects, that is to say, without points, so we have to define a path, it can be anything, it doesn't matter. We will use this temporary object later. Here comes the most complicated part. We are going to calculate the amount of points that are going to be shown each frame in this way. Then, using the grouper function, we are going to pack the points using the previously calculated variable. And then we define the number of packets that were calculated. Now, it is possible that some dots were not added to dots packed, that is, they were left over. So we have to calculate the leftover dots in this way. And at the end, we add those leftover dots to dots packed. This way we make sure that dots packed has all the dots. Now we define the function update dots, which is going to be an alpha updater animation. Now, the purpose of the variable count is to indicate the corresponding index of data packed. That is, at the end of the animation, the variable count and the variable total frames will be equal. Thanks to this index, we can obtain the points that have to be displayed each frame, and remove their transparency. Then we count the number of dots that are in the circle. The variables n dots in circle and n dots in screen are just other counters. n dots in circle is the number of dots inside the circle, and n dots in screen is all the dots in both the circle and the square. In my course, I explain why we have to use this try-catch, which is basically due to a small problem that alpha and dt updaters have. Once the function is defined, we create the counter objects that will be displayed on the screen. The variable counter dots is going to show all the dots that have been added to the screen. 
and the variable pi is the one that will show the calculation in real time. The rest you already know. We have to use a linear rate func so that everything looks correctly. And that's it. When you are using OpenGL Renderer, I recommend you to define this alias so you don't have to write all that. We just need to be careful here so that the FPS match, and that's it. We see that everything works correctly. And indeed the values are close to pi. I'll leave the code for this scene in the video description. If you want to learn how to use Manum, you can enroll in my Manum Basic and Intermediate courses, you can buy both courses for $50. And if you already have the basics, you can expand your knowledge with the intermediate course for only $30 using the coupon you see on the screen. This coupon is only valid for this month, and the courses have a 30 days guarantee. There is no other online course at the same level and dozens of solved exercises are included for you to practice. See you in the next line of code.